This irrigated cotton crop would please any Texas farmer. Three and a half bales to the acre are expected. It's not a Texas field though. Rise and fall of the growth curve. This cotton is grown in Australia. Milking cows on a family dairy farm could be anywhere in the Lone Star State. These cows, however, call New Zealand home. A group of Texas farmers and ranchers traveled to Australia and New Zealand recently. It was part of a global education trip sponsored by the Texas Farm Bureau. International trade and challenges in today's agriculture were big topics of interest for both the Texas growers and their counterparts. Every question from a colleague producer is interesting because north, south, east or west, we all share the same production difficulties, be they nature, markets, political environment. Whether you speak the same language or not, we have the same difficulties and challenges. This year's Australian cotton crop should be a big one. Nearly 100% of Aussie cotton is exported. The crop this year is going to come in around about 4.3 to 4.5 million bales. That will be probably Australia's third largest crop in, in history. There are 120,000 farmers and ranchers in Australia. Trade forms the lifeblood of the Australian red meat industry. Beef in particular. 70% of the country's beef is exported. The U.S. is Australia's second largest export market. Grass-fed beef remains dominant in Australia. This livestock sale in Camden, New South Wales featured 400 head. Our cattle numbers at the moment are certainly low to where they have been, so everyone's in a rebuilding phase and female cattle at the moment are very hard to source and if you do find, you certainly have to uh, pay a premium. The Texas leaders were introduced to the country's National Livestock Identification System. They also learned about the beef industry's integrity and traceability systems and its meat-eating quality programs. They're light years ahead of us on the animal ID program and their vaccination programs are relatively simple, but they do go through a lot of quality assurance through their government regulations just like we're having to experience in the states. New Zealand is a country of 4.7 million people. It produces enough food to feed 40 million people. Dairy is by far the nation's leading agricultural sector. New Zealand dairy farmers account for just 3% of world production, but they account for 33% of world trade. 95% of domestic milk production is exported. They're mostly a Holstein Friesian based operation here uh, with some Jersey influence, and that seems to be what a lot of the New Zealand dairies are. The cows are a little smaller than most cows in Texas and across the country, but that has something to do with the way they feed them and the way they make their milk, which is mostly off of grass. Fonterra is a farmer-owned dairy cooperative. It is also New Zealand's largest company and the world's largest dairy exporter. It collects 85% of the milk produced in the country. We've passed the days when New Zealand and US and Europe were batting heads against each other uh, and now we've got a lot of opportunities together in the global markets. This crop of spring milling wheat on the South Island is ready for harvest. Farmer Brian Ledley is hoping for about 160 bushels an acre. A very good crop, but wheat farming in New Zealand has its challenges. Some of the issues we're getting into and getting really concerned about is chemical resistance. Um, so we're working on quite varied rotation with our cereals and grasses. Regulations are a big part of New Zealand agriculture because of its reliance on exports. Some of the regulations that they put upon themselves are for their food safety, their food integrity, you know, and the quality of their product. Australian and New Zealand farmers are regarded as some of the most productive in the world. Available water is the key. There's some big producers here in areas, but there's a lot of small producers, and what they can get out of an acre is unbelievable. Agriculture down under, 8,000 miles from Texas, but a way of life that is close to home. For TFB News, Gary Joyner, Australia.